Good morning. We have been discussing about numerical methods which help us to solve equations of the form f of x is equal to 0. In the previous class, we discussed the bisection method with the help of which one can generate a sequence of successive iterates which are approximations to a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0 which lies in an interval of the form a b where f of a into f of b is less than 0. Then we observed that although the sequence of iterates is guaranteed to converge to a root of the equation correct to the desired degree of accuracy, the procedure was a very slow procedure. So, this demands that we have a method which has a faster convergent rate. One such method is Newton Raphson method. We shall discuss this method which helps us to solve an equation of the form f of x is equal to 0 numerically. So, this method involves linearization of the function f of x about a point x naught. So, let us assume that p is an exact root of the equation. What does that mean? It means f of p is equal to 0, but our goal is to determine this p. So, let us start with some initial approximation to this root p. So, let x naught be an approximation to this root p of the equation f of x is equal to 0. So, f of p is 0 and that is f of x naught plus h because this x naught is an approximation. I have therefore, made some error. So, if suppose I add that error to x naught, then f of x naught plus h will be such that it is 0. So, I would like to now expand f of x naught plus h about x naught. So, f of x naught plus h into f dash of x naught plus h square by factorial 2 into f double dash of x naught. So, under the assumption that f double dash exists and is continuous and your h is p minus x naught. So, if h is small, what does that mean? If your x naught is sufficiently close to p, such that h is small, then it is reasonable to neglect this term which is of order of h square. So, we shall assume that h is very small and that terms of order of h square can be neglected. So, it is reasonable terms of order of h square in the above expansion and solve for h from the equation f of x naught plus h into f dash of x naught is 0 and what does that give? That gives you h as minus f of x naught divided by f dash of x naught. So, having determined h, what do we have? We have x naught minus h. What is h? f of x naught divided by f dash of x naught is a better approximation to this root p of the equation f of x is equal to 0 than our initial approximation which is x naught. And therefore, I call this new approximation as x 1. 
So, that x 1 will be x naught minus f of x naught by f dash of x naught. So, I have now a first approximation to a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0, but now I would like to improve this approximation. So, my f of p is f of x 1 plus h. What is it? I expand about the point x 1 that will be f of x 1 plus h into f dash of x 1 plus h square by factorial 2 into f double dash of x 1. And when my h is very small such that x 1 plus h is equal to p, then I am justified in omitting terms of order of h square. The same argument as what we have given here. And so, I omit this term and solve for the new h which is f of x 1 plus h into f dash of x 1 equal to 0 is the equation which is satisfied by h and that gives me h is equal to minus f of x 1 by f dash of x 1 and therefore, x 1 minus f of x 1 by f dash of x 1 is my x 1 plus h. So, this is a better approximation to the root p which we are trying to determine numerically than the approximation with which we started here namely x 1. So, I call this as x 2 and hence I have x 2 to be given by x 1 minus f of x 1 divided by f dash of x 1. So, I continue in this way and then say at the nth step I have x n to be given by x n minus 1 minus f of x n minus 1 divided by f dash of x, mi x n minus 1. And so, I have a method which generates successive approximations x naught, x 1, x 2, etcetera, x n and I can continue, right. So, this is a method which gives me a way to generate these successive iterates. So, starting from n which is equal to 1, I can generate all these iterative values which are approximations to the root of the equation and the method is what is called the Newton Raphson method. So, Newton Raphson method essentially generates a sequence of successive approximations x naught, x 1, etcetera, x n starting with an initial approximation x naught and uses this to generate the successive approximations. So, we have obtained say n such approximations and therefore, we have a sequence of approximations and where do we stop this we already have discussed. Namely, you perform m number of iterations and stop there or you having determined x n check whether the absolute value of f of x n is less than the prescribed tolerance namely epsilon or you check whether x n plus 1 minus x n is less than epsilon namely successive iterative values for the approximations of a root of the equation are such that the difference between them is less than the given accuracy. Then you have checked that your absolute error is less than the prescribed tolerance or you check whether x n plus 1 minus x n divided by x n is less than epsilon where you have checked that the relative error is less than epsilon. So, if any one of this or these two conditions are satisfied, then you stop your iteration using this method and find out that value of x n plus 1 
at which the condition is satisfied. Say if you have taken this as the stopping criterion and say that this is an approximation to the root of the equation namely p and so you have been able to determine a 0 of the function f of f or a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0 correct to the desired degree of accuracy. So, let us now try to illustrate this method by means of the following example. So, the problem is use Newton Raphson method and find the negative root of f of x equal to this given that an initial approximation to this root is x naught equal to minus 7. So, we are given f of x. So, we need to compute the derivative and the method is given by x n plus 1 is x n minus f of x n divided by f dash of x n. So, it is x n minus what is f of x? It is this. So, f of x n is e power x n minus 1.5 minus tan inverse of x n divided by f dash of x n. So, we have computed f dash of x here. So, that will give e to the power of x n by square. So, this is the method which we will have to use to generate the successive iterates given that x naught is minus 1. So, this is valid for x greater than or equal to 0. So, when n is 0, this will give you x 1 in terms of x naught minus f of x naught by f dash of x naught and so on. So, let us work out the successive iterates starting with an initial approximation which is x naught is equal to minus 7. The successive iterates are as follows. x naught is minus 7, the value of the function is minus 0 0.702 into 10 to the minus 1. So, I generate x 1 which is x naught minus f of x naught by f of f dash of x naught and that gives me the value of x 1 to be minus 10.6770 at which the function value is this. Then x 2 is x 1 minus f of x 1 by f dash of x 1 and the values are obtained and the corresponding function values are written here. So, we use this iterative method and then generate the successive iterates and we see that the successive iterates begin to converge to a root of the equation which is minus 14.1012. And we observe that the output that we have given here, there is rapid convergence of these successive iterates. And we observe that at the sixth step, our function value is almost close to 0. And therefore, the Newton Raphson method gives a sequence of iterates which converge rapidly to a root of the given equation f of x is equal to 0. So, this is how you numerically obtain a solution of the given equation f of x is equal to 0 using Newton Raphson method. Let us now consider another example. So, having understood Newton Raphson method, we would now like to compare this method with bisection method and see whether the sequence of iterates converge much rapidly as compared to those generated by bisection method. Let us discuss this by taking the following example. Suppose I am interested in solving the equation f of x is equal to 2 minus e power x. I start with an initial approximation say x naught equal to 0. So, I require f dash of x and my Newton Raphson method is given by x n plus 1 is x n minus f of x n by f dash of x n for n greater than or equal to 0. 
So, I take n to be 0 and obtain the first approximation x 1 which is x naught minus f of x naught by f dash of x naught and that turns out to be 1. Then use x 1 and generate x 2 which is x 1 minus f of x 1 by f dash of x 1 and that gives me x 2 and I continue to generate the sequence of iterations and I observe that in 6 iterations this Newton Raphson method has achieved 13 digit accuracy. Now, I would like to solve the same problem using bisection method. So, given the equation f of x is equal to 2 minus e power x is equal to 0, if I want to apply bisection method, I would first like to have an interval that encloses a root of the equation. <coughs> so, I observe that f of 0 is positive and f of 1 is negative. So, the interval 0 1 encloses a root of the equation. So, I call that interval as a naught b naught. So, I compute the midpoint namely 0 plus 1 by 2. So, p 1 will be half and I evaluate f of p 1 and that turns out to be positive. And therefore, f of p 1 into f of 1 is negative. So, there is a root between half and 1 and so I call a 1 b 1 as half to 1 this interval that encloses a root of this equation. So, I evaluate f of a 1 positive f of b 1 negative. So, p 2 is half plus 1 by 2 and therefore, I get an approximation at the second step to the root of the equation and I continue in this way and I observe that when I have performed 20 such iterations the midpoint of that interval at this iteration turns out to be this and I see that at after 20 iterations the bisection method has only 6 digit accuracy whereas Newton Raphson method at the end of 6 iterations had achieved 13 digit accuracy and therefore, the number of correct digits in Newton Raphson method is doubling in every iteration and Newton Raphson method converges much faster than the bisection method. So, we have a new numerical method by means of which we can generate a sequence of iterates which converges rapidly to a root of the equation. But we require an initial approximation x naught which is very close to the root of the equation. How do you get this approximation? One of the methods is bisection method. So, you given an equation f of x is equal to 0, find out an interval in which a root lies by determining say a b such that f of a into f of p is negative. So, this root lies within this interval. So, perform some few iterations of bi, bi bisection method and get an approximation to a root of the equation. Call that as an initial approximation and start using Newton Raphson method and generate a sequence of successive iterates which will converge rapidly to a root of the equation. So, we have developed Newton Raphson method, we have seen how one can use this method to obtain a sequence of iterates converging to a root of the equation. We have also compared the two methods which we have learnt namely the bisection method and the Newton Raphson method and we observe that Newton Raphson method converges much faster as compared to the bisection method. So, let us now try to see the geometrical interpretation of this Newton Raphson method. Essentially, Newton Raphson method involves linearization of the function f of x. So, let us see how it is done. So, we would like to give a geometrical interpretation. of Newton Raphson method. So, we have already seen that Newton Raphson method involves linearization of this function f. What did we do? 
given this function f, we said f of x naught plus h is f of x naught plus h into f dash of x naught plus h square by factorial 2 into f double dash of x naught and so on. Then we said that if we linearize this function about the point x naught by omitting terms of order h square, then the linearization of the function f of x about x naught is a function L of x, which is f of x naught plus h into f dash of x naught. What are the properties of this function L of x? Let us see. If I evaluate L of x at x naught, then it is f of x naught plus h into f dash of x naught. What is h here? h is x minus x naught. So, it is f of x naught plus x minus x naught into f dash of x naught. So, I am evaluating it at x naught. So, this will be x naught minus x naught. So, that will give me f of x naught. So, here h is x minus x naught. So, what do I observe? I observe that the function which linearizes this f about the point x naught has the property that it takes the same value as f at x naught, namely L of x naught is f of x naught. Let us find out what is L dash of x. Let me first write down L of x as f of x naught plus x minus x naught into f dash of x naught. So, what is L dash of x? It is simply f dash of x naught. So, at x naught, what is L dash of x naught? It is this constant value f of f dash of x naught. So, what is the property that the function L has? It takes the same value as the function at x naught. It is such that takes the same value as the derivative of the function at x naught. And therefore, I am justified in approximating this function f of x in a neighborhood of the point x naught by a linear function given by L of x is equal to this or I am justified in approximating this function f in a neighborhood of x naught by a straight line. So, if I am given the function f and I am interested in solving the equation f of x is equal to 0 and I draw the graph of f of x. Geometrically, the point where the graph of f crosses the x axis gives you the exact root of the equation p. So, now I am choosing a point x naught very close to p. So, and take the corresponding point x naught comma f of x naught on the curve. Okay. I would like to approximate the function f in a neighborhood of x naught by a straight line. whose slope is f dash of x naught. So, I draw a tangent to the curve at the point x naught comma f of x naught and see where it crosses the x axis and I call that point as p 1. Let us see what we have done. I have a straight line which is tangent to the curve at the point x naught comma f of x naught passing through the point x naught comma f of x naught and having slope f dash of x naught. So, what is the equation of the line? The equation of the line is y minus f of x naught equal to its slope multiplied by x minus x naught. Then I check where does this line cross the x axis say at some point x is equal to p 1, y is 0. So, f of x naught is f dash of x naught into p 1 minus x naught. 
which gives me p 1 minus x naught is minus f of x naught by f dash of x naught and therefore, p 1 is equal to x naught minus f of x naught divided by f dash of x naught. And you observe that this is essentially your Newton Raphson method, which is giving you the first approximation to a root of the equation when you have started with an initial approximation as x naught. So, having got p 1, you call that point as x 1 and then draw a tangent to the curve at the point x 1 comma f of x 1 and the point where it crosses the x axis you call that as p 2. Then by the same argument you would end up with p 2 as x 1 minus f of x 1 divided by f dashed of x 1. So, you have a second approximation obtained using the using the point where the tangent to the curve at x 1 comma f of x 1 crosses the x axis and you observe that this is essentially the second approximation generated by the Newton Raphson method. So, you continue and you observe that every time you come closer and closer to the root of the equation namely p at which the graph of the function y is equal to f of x crosses the x axis. So, Newton Raphson method essentially involves linearization of the function f about the point and approximating the function by means of a straight line which is the tangent to the curve at that point say x i comma f of x i and this generates a sequence of iterates which converge to a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0. So, the uh, so it looks as though starting with some initial approximation and use Newton Raphson method generate a sequence of iterates then the sequence is to converge to a root of the equation, but this is not always true. The there are examples of functions whose shape is such that and the starting values are such that the Newton Raphson method fails to genera generate iterations which converge to a root of the equation. So, we shall give an example to demonstrate this statement. So, let us consider this example. We are given y is equal to f of x and we are asked to determine a root of this equation using Newton. So, I have drawn the graph of y is equal to f of x which is this. I start with an in where does it cross? It crosses the x axis at this point. So, this is the actual root of the equation. I start with an initial approximation x naught. So, I take a point x naught comma f of x naught on this curve and then drop a tangent to the curve and I see that the tangent to the curve meets the x axis at x 1. So, that is my next approximation to a root of the equation. So, it falls on the other side of this root p. I now take the point x 1 comma f of x 1 on the curve y equal to f of x and draw a tangent to the curve at that point and see where it crosses the x axis. So, it is at x 2 where it crosses the x axis. So, I take a point x 2 comma f of x 2 on this curve and then draw a tangent to the curve and I see that the tangent is like this which is parallel to the x axis and therefore, there are starting values x naught and functions f of x whose shape is such that the successive iterates generated by Newton Raphson method fails to converge and therefore, whenever we want to make use of Newton Raphson method, it is important to make some statements about how close our initial approximation x naught is 
and we should take care of the shape of the function y is equal to f of x, whether it satisfies certain properties. Because this example clearly illustrates or demonstrates that the Newton Raphson method may not always converge to root of the equation because it depends on how close our initial approximation is and what is the shape of the graph of the function y is equal to f of x, where interested in solving the equation f of x is equal to 0. So, we will continue with the error analysis and the convergence of Newton-Raphson method in the next class.